the mountain. He said, nothing will harm you in thy holy mountain. Study these scriptures. Go where he is. you to have that Jacob's ladder that you can climb up into new places. But first of all, you've got to have a hunger to want that. It's almost like a desperation in your heart to change a lot of things to have it. You know, Jacob suffered a lot before he had that experience. A lot. He, had, he stole his brother's birthright and he had to run and leave and hide. Then his father-in-law cheated him out of his destiny almost until God gave him the strategies of what to do to have more. Constantly, he was concerned he was going to run into his brother again and he wasn't going to like him. And in the end, you all know he, Rachel died by the wayside. And I shared this with a Jewish acquaintance of mine and he said, no one ever preaches that. He had to remove Rachel because she was too much like him. She did the same thing he did. She stole her father's idols. That's why he really loved her. She was a lot like him. But I want to be the iron that sharpens iron, don't you? That's why God will put you with different people. You're not comfortable because they don't think like you do. Will you get them to think like you do? Praise the Lord. You see a look, you see a little garden there somewhere where God's planted a seed and He wants to bring that person forth. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Someone had a sound, let it go. I heard it. Let it come.
Sing to the heavens, and I will move in the earth. Sing to the heavens, and I will send your word. Sing to the heavens, the rain will come. To the heavens, I bringing forth my sons. Sing to the heavens. sermons, but we don't get a message from what God is saying. Can you say amen or only? Amen. We get a sermon, but we don't really get a message of what God is saying. It's in moments like this when the glory comes that you have an understanding. How many understand what I'm saying? You have an understanding. It's like God's been speaking in riddles, so you just had a part here and a part there, but suddenly he puts the lines together and you understand the message. And one of the things that people have got, got learned to do is to tune everything out. It's been on your mind or what you need or what your concern is when you come into his presence. Tune it out. And then you'll begin to ascribe greatness into the Lord. Great. This is, these are seeds of greatness that's coming out of us. Seeds of greatness that change us. The Lord wants to put Joseph's coat on many people. You know, his coat was really sackcloth. From the beginning to near the end of his life in the natural, there was a lot of suffering. You think about it. There's about 13 chapters in the books of Genesis concerning his life and what he went through. Because God was raising him up to a high place. And it's not that we want to, we don't want notoriety. 
We want people to notice who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. That little girl just in the church Wednesday night just started crying. I'll, I just started talking to her about, you know, you're as close to Jesus as you want to be. As you want to be. You'll make an effort. You're not too old. Now, come on, I'm old. I'm not ancient, but I'm old. <laughs> but I know what I feel inside, and if I feel like rolling, I'm going to roll. This is the year the church will know the majesty of the King, of who He is, high and lifted up, and His glory is going to fill your temple. Read it. Read it in the book of in the book of Isaiah. Two years ago, I started speaking to the prayer group about this scripture because trouble that's coming upon the earth. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust. That, that's the sackcloth and ashes. For the fear of the Lord and for the glory, for the glory, for the glory of his majesty. It's not prophecy, it's the spirit of prophecy. Amen? It's the power of prophecy. It's the power of what it can do. That's why you want to declare from the heavens what God is doing. We don't have many people today that can, is really labeled what God is doing. But I can tell you, we have been, in our little prayer meeting, we've been talking about it. And sometimes you, some of you, I can see by your faces, you think, well, all she ever talks about is judgment. And I'm trying to help you learn it's coming and to be prepared. This season, the next six months, is a time of preparation. Preparation. Repentance. Humbling ourselves. You need to call somebody, call them. Write them a letter. Write them a letter. But it says, this is in Isaiah 2, the purging. O oh, house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light, in the light, in the light of the Lord. Verse 5. This is in Isaiah 2. O oh, house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob. Talk about all the soothsayers and Philistines and the things that people pleased themselves with. You notice God's just stopped everything. The sports arena, the bars, the things that women love the most, you know. I, I don't want to make anybody feel bad. He shut down the beauty shops. You may, we need to take notice of what God is doing. It says in one day, if you read it in, Psalm, in Isaiah 24, in one day he's going to turn the world upside down. In one, how do you know he's, he's doing it? I mean, they just suddenly came out in one day and said, we're shutting the churches down. I thought, you devil, what have you done? Can you see how cunning the enemy was? So what did we do? We've had a service every Friday, except one time since the, the word corona, the word crown means corona. This is what this... Jonathan Kahn, he talks about the harbingers that are to come. The Lord spoke to him in 9-11 and said in 19 years it's going to happen again. And it's been exactly 19 years. It's happening again. God's trying to get our attention. And Ruth Heflin said something one day. She said, you know, I just realized something. If we don't hurry up and die, there won't be anybody to come to our funeral. Because all the people the same age are going to die too. So you make up your mind you're going to live to be a hundred. Are you going to be one of the last voices that's going to croak in this day? Hallelujah. But it says here, listen to this. Whoops, the wind got a hold of my page. He says, the land is full of idols. The land is full, is full of silver and gold. There's no end of their treasure. Just listen, there's going to be, I'm just telling you this. I'm sorry it's happening. 
I'm really sorry. There's going to be more bankruptcy. They won't, you know why there won't be anything to be able to buy or sell? Because there won't be any businesses. Can you see them shutting down? Can you see what's happening? I thought about this, but you, what's happening, God's let it come gradually so it won't uh, cause great fear to come into our heart. But know that God is allowing things to come. I wondered how he was going to do it. I said, Lord, it's your God, but how are you going to do it? And then I saw it, and I laughed and laughed and jumped and shouted and laughed. And not at what was happening to the people. I said, God, this coronavirus has stopped everybody in a moment. In the whole world. Have you thought about that? In the whole world. Well, it didn't really bother me that much because I don't go shopping much. I don't even know the thing that I'd really like to have. And where would I put it? But I need more of God. We need more of the Lord. We need more of his presence. We need more of his shine upon our face. We need more light upon us. That people shall be drawn. Like I told you, the man, it just out, out of nowhere, I can give you a dozen stories. You want to live this life. I'm nobody special. But I said, Lord, you put me here for something. Help me to draw people to you. And they walk up in the store and start talking to me about their lives. And I haven't said anything to them. They're looking for help. So it says here, and he said, the mean man is going to bow down and the great man is going to humble himself. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for the fear of the Lord. It's three times in this chapter. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Now these next six months are six months of other things, I'm just telling you. So just put the signs on your mirror and on your refrigerator and on your... I did yesterday, somebody took my car out and I put two notes on my steering wheel. They were going to clean it inside out. And I put on that steering wheel, do not move this seat. I said, now make sure they read those notes. Because if they move it, it the motor's gone, and I can't put it back in place without paying $100 to do it. Do not move this seat. And I said, you make sure they understand what this means. I told her. I told her. D. She said, OK, I'll tell them. You got to make sure they, they don't move this seat or I can't drive this car. You're going to have to write notes to yourself. Steer yourself. Awaken yourself. Go into your mirror in your bathroom and talk to it. <coughs> I need a different look today, Lord. I need a more heavenly look. I need to look like I'm going to the kingdom here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so this is the year. David Wilkerson is saying it. Chuck Pierce is saying it. He's not going to do anything without telling his servants first. Now, don't get upset with me. I used to look at what was happening when she talked about the glory. What's she talking about? And I couldn't sleep. What's she talking about? What's she saying? For the glory. What happens when that presence comes? It puts you in a holding pattern. You know how they do planes sometimes they can't land? He's got you up in the air. Stay there. Hallelujah. He's got you closer to himself. Stay there. Say, Lord, I'm not coming down till you bless me. And say it with feeling. And keep saying it. Jump up down a little bit like a child looking for his ice cream cone. You know how they keep pulling on mommy? And then I read it again. I'm reading that book over and over. Heaven is a real place. I've had lots of wonderful visitations that people hardly believe. But when that little boy went to heaven and his parents questioned him, the little boy said to his parents, he said, Daddy, every Sunday morning, the Lord throws, he, he said it like this, like he threw handfuls of the Spirit down to him every morning so he could make it in his sermon. And he said, what are you saying? He said, Jesus said, you need the Spirit. He did not see a lot of people don't have the Holy Ghost and they don't need, really know they need it. The keeping power is the power that operates everything. 
And then he remembered, he said, he'd say to the, after that, after his son told him that, he said, Lord, nothing's going to happen this morning if you don't get into it. We need to talk to God about these things. Don't take him for granted. He told me one day in Australia, you can do nothing without me. I miss my timing. You can do nothing without me. So we want to have a fellowship and a visitation and know the timing. But we've been talking about this for about two years. Trouble is coming. I didn't know it was going to be this soon upon us. How many of you recognize suddenly how this thing is it's just so quick, it's been like lightning. How it's suddenly going upon us. And you know, if you've been dancing and singing and clapping and witnessing and reading your Bible and paying your tithes, then you're right in the flow of what God wants. Be faithful to your husband. This is what we're talking about. Be faithful to God. And you really know when you're faithful or not, when you start crying over some things you wished you had done and you didn't do it. Can anybody say amen? Amen. Major strongholds. See, we go to church and we hear a lot of sermons, but we don't have any relationship with the Lord. We just, listen, we just take a seductive spirit right into the church with us. I'm telling you what I'm seeing in the spirit. You, you, you've got, if you have Christ in us, and you hit that door, I do this often, and I've had some wonderful times, and everybody's looking at me and asking me if I'm okay. I had somebody come and tell me I'm zapped with the spirit, and they got out on the floor, are you okay? You know what I finally did? I got up off the floor. I said, would you please leave me alone? Finally, the spirit is taken over, and you're disturbing it. There, honey, there are no more friends and relatives when it comes to this. Right. It's just you. Somebody said that's right. It's just you and the Lord, and you need to know it because we're going to be responsible for what we have received and what we have done with it. That's right. He told my mother that one day. He took her out of this world when he said it to her and died, and my sister grabbed her hands and called her back to life. Now, these are strong words, but it needs to pierce our heart. She had a vision just before she died. I've always wondered about that. And my sister saw her die, grabbed her hands and commanded life to come back so she could put that thing in order. We want to put everything in order and let the spirit work. How many have read the book Heaven is Real by that old cult? I just read it for the first time this year. And I couldn't get over reading it. And I couldn't. The first time I read it, I cried, so I had to read it again. I couldn't see for the tears. Because the reality of what the Lord shared with that child and hadn't shared it with older people. And he didn't tell anybody for a long time. We need these kind of experiences, what the Lord is saying. Amen. We need to hear the voice of the prophet here in this room. There's 27 people here. And we used to contend for this when, in the ministry that I came from. I'm not living in the past. There's a whole book full of things that happened in the past, and they're up to date every day. That's the spirit. It never grows old. But we need to have an experience when we come out of the bedroom. I remember that morning I came out. I got up and I didn't try. I don't know what happened. It just came out of my mouth. You know, usually people, when you wake up, there's a scripture that says don't be talking a lot. Because usually, usually God visits every person just before they wake up. If you're not, ask him why. He's a living spirit. Amen? He's your friend. So I got up in my room. I mean, my bones don't get out of the bed like they did when I was 30. And I got up out of the bed, but I've learned to just open your mouth and speak it, and life will come to it. That's why when you start to tell dreams, you don't understand it, but as you begin to speak it, you're declaring the mind of God and then suddenly the revelation comes. And I get out of my bed, he's at one end and I'm the other, and I've told this, but listen, have some experiences with the Lord. I got out of the bed and I started to say, do you promise to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? And I go down to her room. Dee, are you awake? <laughs> yeah. I said, are we going to court for something? Are you, do you have to go to court? I'll go with you. I mean, I... 
You don't know what happens from night to morning. She said, well, no. I said, well, God is speaking something. This is how it started. Bobby Connors, in, in just a week, somebody threw it down in front of me. He's had a visitation from the Lord. He's in the court. And the Lord said to him, he said, all he saw was a light brighter than the sun, and out of the light came these words. The church needs a righteous revolution. Amen. Righteous. Anybody know what righteous means? I'll just give you a little excerpt here. And read what I'm saying. I went to the store to buy myself something to wear to bed. This lady's trying to sell me something. I said, honey, I can't wear that today. She said, why not? I said, well, the Lord might come. <laughs> there might be a fire. <laughs> Somebody might come. You bet, listen, I'm telling you, we're, we're talking about righteousness here. What pleases God. Some of these women need to stop wearing some of the things you're wearing. There's no holiness in it. He said, boy, you're hard. No, I'm not hard. I'm telling you, I saw one of my relatives in heaven, and they didn't have on a robe of righteousness, but they had on a robe of salvation. There's a difference. Think about it. I'm just telling you some things. So I just told her, I said, where would you wear this? I said, I don't know. Wouldn't you bring it in the store? You brought in all these coats, so we're going to have a cold wave here? I mean, I just speak some sense to these people. Why are you selling all these winter coats here? The lady laughed and laughed. I said, honey, where are you going to wear these coats? But you see, they just make something they want you to buy, it, and it's money, money, money. We just need to separate some things and divide some things. But I've had the Lord to tell me to do certain things. For revival's sake. You want to hear what God wants to make it place. And he doesn't always do it. But I started going to our church, and a lot of Sunday mornings I said, Lord, do something different this morning. If you have to change the sermon, change the sermon. Let your spirit move. Let the people be touched. Let they're changed. And I remember Pastor was coming up the aisle, and I just came to the second door. And I did a somersault and landed upside down across the seat. I went right up the air and went, whoop. <laughs> the pastor looked at me. He came running across the aisle. Sister Bruce, he was, you know, saying, I know you walk in the glory. I said, no, brother, you've been praying all morning. And the glory ran into the anointing, and this is what happened. Yeah. yeah. And so I've been praying that prayer, do something different. So I got my friends together and we went over to an apostolic church. Do you know what an apostolic church is? Yeah. Anybody know the apostolic church? No. Well, they don't wear any jewelry or bring their polish or they don't color their hair. They don't wear pants in the church. They only wear a plain wedding band and their jewelry. And I'm not against them because I was born in an apostolic family. We didn't even have a television or a Christmas tree. Too rural. That'll make you think about me a little bit. And I remember, I took all these ladies in, and they had long red fingernails that I took. Wow. Long earrings. I thought, oh boy, this is going to prove who somebody is today. And they went in. A lot of them were in pantsuits. And these people, if you've ever heard anybody sing, they know how to sing and they know how to play music. I can tell you that. The best musicians are from the Apostolic Church. But when they, we came in, they had tambourines, you know, long painted. I'm talking about paint things. I just closed my eyes. But they knew how to dance, and they knew how to play the tambourines, and they loved the Lord. We didn't go there to mess up their church, but it messed up that church that night. And God's going to mess up a lot of our schemes and the way we do things to get our attention, that we will serve the Lord with gladness. Like our brother, the rhythm hit just right. Now, what some of you do not know or do know, when he danced, he wasn't dancing in the earthly, he was dancing in the heavens. And it was releasing 
much wisdom from the Lord and many moves from the Lord. There were strategies all in his dance because of the rhythms that was in his feet. Somewhere he's going to hear about a release at this hour, this day. Because God does not pour his power through us just to make us feel good. He doesn't. He doesn't waste anything. I don't care what it is. So when I heard Mary Ann's, that little river started in her, it just interrupted everything there for a moment because the sound of heaven was on her voice. You got that? So what is God saying? The Lord said, come up higher. Come on. He's, this, he's waiting for us to come up higher. Our pastor prayed all summer. He said, I'm believing God to give me a $100,000 check so I can send all the workers here to the field. And we kept hearing him say it. And we'd praise the Lord. Well, he's standing up there one during the summer in the middle of the meetings. And he said, well, I told you I'm praying for this $100,000 check. And I'm holding it in my hand. And the people just went. Oh, no. He said, did you hear what I said? We got the $100,000 check. How many people jumped out of their seats and ran around the tabernacle about eight times? How big was it? From here across the street. Like, it's 100 degrees, and it's humid. You see, they didn't even hear him. We don't hear a lot of times what God is saying, what the Holy Ghost is saying. But he's got direction in every word and everything that you do. And you're not saying, I'm going to. The thing that people said long ago, praise the Lord, whether you feel like it or not, well, of course. Because he said, I create the fruit of your lips. I create the clapping. And I'm not going to give it to them in a ball game. It all belongs to God. Now, you'll get this. I used to get so upset with Sister Ruth. I'm ashamed of the prayers that I prayed. I repented and repented. But she was trying to get me to open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. That you have a free praise in you, wherever you are. And I've been, I've been in Costco singing to the Lord. And I watch people stop what they were doing, and they look at me like this when they come back. Not singing loudly. You know, when... I still have toilet paper. I haven't been back to buy anything from the beginning. <laughs> Nothing. That's what God does. He keeps you supplied. He keeps you taken care of. That you lack for nothing. Everybody hearing me? You dance for your meal. Come on. David danced and fed the whole nation on three pieces of bread and meat and wine. I'm talking about three items. The Bible said his dance fed the whole nation. Come on. Who wants to be molten? Get up and volunteer your service. Come on, you need to get more excited about the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'll call up Pastor Clark Taylor from Africa and say, I mean, Australians in him over to you. You people that, listen, you got to be ready for revival. He came to our camp and he just said, Oh, the Lord is wonderful. He's all about how wonderful. Honey, that's all there is. He's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And he sits down, and Brother Evelyn said, don't let him fool you by his quiet talk. He gets up the first night and calls out 20 words of knowledge. I shared this with you. 20. God's hearing this and this and this and this. Sister, our camp was never the same after that. He said, I want all you people to come up that these words fit. They never made it. They got out of their seats. They step out of the aisle that steps into the place where everybody dances, and they all fell on top of each other in a pile. In a pile. I haven't seen that. Where's the pile? The Bible said the slain of the Lord will be many. Everybody tries to water it down. I'm telling you something. We're missing. We're missing the water, honey. We're missing the water trip. How many of you need a water trip? And look out. When you ask the Lord to do something different, you've got to be the first scapegoat he uses to experience. So maybe you need to be awakened. Your heart is not awakened. I'm telling you what I know about the Spirit. Your heart is not awakened. I live by faith, and I have been living by faith for 47 years, and I have never been forsaken because I've made myself dance and praise the Lord and spend time when I didn't feel like it with him. My flesh didn't feel like it. And I told him that I, Lord, my flesh doesn't feel like it. 
Quicken my spirit. Quicken my spirit. Quicken my spirit. And so he does. So what does he do? He keeps you awake the first night, half the night. I need some rest. No, you told me to quicken your spirit. I'm doing it. And Kevin Zeta is saying the same thing. He just said it on his YouTube. He said the church is not ready for everybody. Because you don't understand, and I'm not being mean to you. You've got to understand what brings revival and how it operates. You feel like you're in a hurry all the time when the revival comes. You feel like you don't have enough time to get things done. You just feel God changing your schedule and moving things and cutting things away that is that is encompassed our lives too much and taking too much of our time. We're not in the kingdom yet. But we'll find ourselves very busy pursuing. I found myself writing more letters this week to people. I've done it in a long time. I don't, I just don't like doing it. And she can tell you I've been at the kitchen table. Man, write some up, throw it up, start all over again. I've torn up, thrown away, start all over again. Because I want them to feel the heart of God and the words that I write unto them. I want them to be steered and be quickened by the things of God. Hallelujah. You want to be sure soil that people sow into. Come on. They sow into your life. They take you places. They want to take you out to eat because they want to hear something from God. They want to know what you know in God. What do you want to give them? What is God doing? I had a lady to come into my house and she didn't come for good. She came for trouble. And she stared a lot up to what she did. And I didn't want to say anything because people that are in the public side and ministries, you can't lose it any time you feel like it. You don't have anything to give then. It's gone. You lost the coin. And I remember I cried out to God, Lord, this woman's invaded my house. She's caused a lot of trouble to help me. And that week somebody came while she was still there with another friend of mine was there. And my friend, I said, let's go out to eat. And we went down to Glendale where they have all those little shops. And we're sitting there waiting for the food. And my friend starts talking about the spirit. She said, well, I'll tell you, it's like this. And everything that had happened in my house with that woman, she put it on the table. I heard no more from that friend ever again. God just took care of it. He wants to move in on our lives and our territory to resolve all these things that have pulled us down and kept us down. But we haven't been able to do what God wants us to do. Make it a habit. I've made it a habit to try to be earlier. I've made it a habit to wait on the Lord at night. It doesn't matter. God wants us to experience the heavens in this place. The heavens of this place. That when you go out of here, you've come up three, four dimensions into his presence. And we're like Jacob. The Lord had to get him to a place he could change him, remember? He kept allowing things to happen in his life. So finally he said, you're no longer going to be called Jacob. Amen. You'll be called Israel. You'll be called a nation. You'll be called a people. You're going to be people after God's reputation in your life. You're a troublemaker to the devil. Amen. And you're a troublemaker to everything else that stands in the way of God. But if you will not let it happen, you're going to come into an authority. You're going to learn to be a worshiper. Listen, I didn't. we were singers in our family, but we had no glory on our voices. None. We had a lot of singers in the church, and they don't have glory on their voices. Mm. They're using talent. I'm trying to tell you that's why there's no river and suddenly people don't see the Lord. They don't see the Lord. You want, you, you, we want to, listen, it's just not a building. I heard somebody say it's a building. No, it isn't. It's a sanctuary where we come to meet with God. It's a sanctuary. It's a holy place. This place, did you ordain this place when you came here? Yes. Richard told me when we were over at CFT and he said, I come in and anoint all these seats before the people get here. We had benches on our church. Do you know how long it took me to anoint them benches? We had a church and they were looking for volunteers. The clinic had 85 rooms in it. 85. 17 bathrooms. Three people to clean it every Saturday. 
I was there all day long from the morning to night and only cleaned the portion that we used. I thought, well, somebody's going to take these keys. They didn't. I stayed there until the Lord released me. If he gives you the keys to the church, he's going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Amen. Amen? How many want the keys to the kingdom? Now, what I'm saying to you is let God put the spotlight on anything in your life that you think needs changing. I did. I finally had to say, Lord, you've got to get a hold of my appetite. I know you know how to do it, but I'm giving you permission to do it now. Come on, you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to give you permission. I'm giving you permission. I heard the Lord say, well, one day when I was complaining about something, well, in other words, he was saying, you ask, I'm doing it. Hallelujah. How many want that change? A change. Richard, give me some change music. We got change music. Okay. That same man that spoke that whole week at our camp. I never experienced a week in my life. It changed my whole life. I felt like I'd been in a coffin and he pulled all the nails out. And honey, when you get out of the box, there's no stopping doesn't matter what people think. Listen, don't worry about what people say about you, what they think about you. That's a good sign. You want a sign? That's a sign. They're talking about me. <laughs> well, I must be a lot like Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Give them an answer that they can't gainsay. Praise the Lord. And agree with them. You're right. You're right. They did. Jesus did that. Yes, yes, I understand. Hallelujah. He said, beware when men say all manner of good about you. You better beware. You correct him and say that what you're saying is not really me. Hallelujah. Maybe when I'm in the spirit. But I want to become like it more every day. So God is going to bring signs and wonders. I wish there were some things I could share with you, but it would expose too much. But I'm telling you, God is setting up those that are after him. And you're going to be amazed and delighted at the same time that the freedom that is going to come into your life, the victory that's going to come, the glory that's going to be revealed. And he's going to say, unto you, you've been faithful to me. God wants you to be faithful unto him. Hallelujah. I didn't feel like going to this tonight because I don't see well in at night. But I got in that car and I drove it and I said, Lord, put angels around me and keep me alert. Keep me alert. Keep... See, we can find all kinds of reasons not to do something for God if we want to. Oh, yeah. Anybody know what I'm saying? I can say I don't see well, so I'm not going to go to church. Ooh. I've almost hit seven people, I'll be honest with you. There are runners down that path and there's no sidewalk there. And there's no light there sometimes at the church. One person actually hit my car. I heard him say, Take the side of my car. I didn't see them. They barely got out in front of my car. It happened seven times. I said, Lord, we don't want to hit anybody. But with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I'm speaking to you this morning. God said, I see this steering wheel, and it's right here in the middle of everybody's heart. And God wants to get in the driver's seat. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everywhere you go, there'll be a soul to win, a testimony to give. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. There'll be a working of miracles like you've never experienced. The favor of the Lord is going to be upon those that will follow hard after God. Great favor. But first, he's got to change the personality. And you've got to know what revival is. Revival means getting up early and tearing late. It means waiting upon the Lord when you don't want to, and there's a lot of other things on the agenda. Hallelujah. And you're talking about revival. It's going to be like something you've never experienced. Not somebody having another revelation. All you need is a revelation of Jesus Christ. That's all you need is a revelation of Jesus Christ. And Jacob said, God was here, and I didn't know it. I didn't know it. 
He's been here this morning in and out, weaving in and out of these seats. I've seen him weaving in and out like a light. Searching, searching, searching for something. Searching. At the same time, I started earlier when this little boy, Colton was his name. Read it again. Get it in your spirit. Say, Lord, let me have this kind of experience. Let me experience what this boy experience. And mean it. you got to mean it, honey. God knows whether you mean it or not when you ask him. He knows that. People want, they want to hear all the great people that come to town. Well, God is in this place. He's the greatest one you want to talk to. Amen. And when I read about I said to the Lord a few weeks ago, I told you this. I said, Lord, I don't see the light on people's faces like I do. Maybe you don't see it all night. But when I was a child, the saints had a light on their face. And you walked around like this in front of them. I'm serious. You walked like this like you were a little afraid. Because the glory was so great, it almost, it was so great on the people, you didn't feel like you were saved. These people stay in prayer all the time. They have a light on their face. And laughing. But it wasn't the kind of life that you, it was a Holy Ghost life. Mm -hmm. They'd hug you, and they couldn't tell you how many times they loved you before they let you go. Kissing me all over my face. I used to hide from these people. I'd see them coming and I'd hide from them. And I remember my aunt found me in the moisture interior one day. She said, what are you doing hiding down by that washroom? And I, I saw her first, so I hid. But somehow she knew I was there with my friend. She went right over, Richie, what you doing there? And she pulled me up on the floor, kissing me all over my face, on my lips. Oh, I just love you so much. So what kind of love is this? Maybe a bride has it for her husband, and he has it for her the first two or three months. He wants to kiss you all over your soul. He wants you to let, to feel his kisses. To feel his love, to feel his nearness. A kiss means closeness. It means fellowship. It means friendship. So as Colton was telling his parents about what he saw in heaven, he said, everybody had wings except Jesus. He said, what did Jesus do? He said, oh, he just went up there. And he had on, what did he have on? What did God look like? He thought a minute, he said, Bluish. You know what that means? That's that blue sapphire. Mm -hmm. That's a real holy place where few people ever get to. Really holy. 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 He hears you every time you speak to him. Every time you call unto him, he hears your voice. But he's wanting his holiness to come with it. Do you everybody understand what I'm saying? He wants his holiness to come with it. He said, what are, you, what, what are you talking about? He's a holy God. And I'm going to be very, very upfront with you. I went in my closet one day and shut the door to hide myself from myself. To come into his holiness. He's so pure that nobody can write about him. Because every time they say holy, they see another area that's more holy. More holy, more holy. And we need to start, we, we don't hear people sing on holiness. We, I don't hear anybody hardly sing songs about, Lord, you're holy. I will tell you what I noticed the other night. God does not want us to go up into the heavens and glorify him, then come back down in the earthly. This is how they're running songs today. This is how you know the river's not there. And they come back to the earthly and they start talking about how you delivered me, Lord, and what you did for me. They bring it back to the earthly. If you're going into the heavenly, stay in the heavenly. Has everybody got that? You know what I'm saying? You don't want to sing a song about salvation, what God's brought you through, what he's done for you, because it's not about you, it's about him. Amen. About him. Hallelujah. You get into the heavenly. One day you're going to say, Lord, I don't want to come back down. Just recently, I've been praying to the Lord about home. It's just been in my spirit. And when you 
can see God and how wonderful and what a friend he is. Nothing in the natural is really precious anymore. Seriously. It's given to you to aid you and help you. Everybody got that? It's given to you to help you and to aid you to know more about him and how giving he is. How precious he is. What a price he's paid. So we want to get ready for revival. So I went to the Pensacola Revival twice instead of a week at a time. And we were doing the same thing almost that they were doing there. But you could tell there was a great spirit of repentance in the air. And I said, Lord, what's different about this revival than what we already had? I want to feel it. But I hadn't, I hadn't had a lot of joy in a long time. So Ruth excused herself. Everybody had gone home just about, and she told me to wait for her. For her, and she went out and talked to her brother Kilpatrick. And I turned around to watch her go out, and this young man brought in his son. He was asleep. And he put him on the seat in the back. I'm in the front. We had front row seats. And all of a sudden, I heard a noise. I wanted to go home. I was tired. And I didn't see anything any different. And I heard a noise like somebody had the hiccups. And I turned to find out with somebody else there but the little boy myself. And this little boy was laying down. And then he would bob up in the air, lay back down again, like a percolator. That's what I looked like. Remember the old time? Percolators, and they had a little song, da -da, bop, 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 bop. they had a little rhythm, they got a song out of it, Maxwell House Coffee. And he'd lay down, and all of a sudden he's sleeping, you know, and he'd go, boop, and he'd pop back up like he had the hiccups. And I realized this was a supernatural thing. This, the Lord, the Lord was ministering to me through this boy. And I started laughing. And I laughed till I got hysterical. He looked just like a coffee pot, Hercules. And you know,